Good morning, this is Reverend William Holden from Faith 11 Shadow. One of the New Testament chapter of God in the island of Amira. Today we would like to speak to you out of the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 13, and it reads thus. Now ye are fool. Now ye are rich. Ye are reigned as kings without us. I would to God ye did reign that we also might reign with you. For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, last, as they were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Leave unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst. And our may are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. And neighbor, my friend, working with our own hands, we reward, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat, but made as a fault of the world, we are the offspring of all things unto this day. Here in verse 8 of First Corinthians chapter 4, Paul is saying you are showing superiority. Some believers were acting as though their lives were full. That is, fully filled and saturated. God is perfected and complete. They were acting as though they were perfect and mature. And had the right to pass judgment upon God's people. They thought they lacked nothing, no gift, no insight, no knowledge, no spiritual understanding. They were acting as though they were reigning as kings in God's church. They were acting as though God had already given them their spiritual reward and exalted them to rule over the believers of the church. Paul says this. This is they were reigning as kings. Then the ministers of God would be reigning with them. It would mean that God had already created the new heavens and earth and rewarded the believers, absorbed them to their promised reward. Super spirituality, a person thinking that he is spiritually superior and fool, needing little if anything, is an extremely dangerous state. In Luke chapter 6, verse 25, Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that lie now, for ye shall mourn and weep. In Revelation chapter 3, and verse 17, Cause thou said, I am rich, and am creek with ghouls, and have need of nothing. Know not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. In Psalm 17 and verse 10, they are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth they speak proudly. Their two minutes are set forth last. The phrase set forth means more than to be seen or exhibited. Picture is that of doom gladiators being taken to the arena. God has set forth a minister as a doom gladiator to serve the world no matter cause. No two points. The man is appointed to death. This is a continuation of the picture of the doom gladiator. He is marching through the city streets and before the screaming walls of the arena. He has made a spectacle before the world. He has to endure it, for he has no choice. Paul sees ministers 
as being spectacles. They are being marched across the scene of our history to carry on their combat as ordained by the emperor and king. They are more spectacles to the world and to angels and men. The few ever understanding and fully accepting them. And from among the few who do accept them, some eventually withdraw and turn against them. Note the contrast Paul is drawing between the attitude of the Corinthians and that of himself and the other ministers of God. The Corinthian believers were living in full satisfaction and comfort while the ministers of God were suffering as respectables of the world. The ministers is expected to serve and to be put last. This is enlarging what has just been said. The ministers is counted as a fool for Christ's sake because of his strong devotion to Christ. The world and too often believers look at the minister as a radical fool. Not too many believers are considered to be fools. Most believers are accepted by the world and among other believers and considered wise. Believers are thought to be strong. They receive the fullness of Christ without suffering too much and without having to go on and on hour after hour and day after day. But not ministers. They are weak that they sometimes suffer the withdrawal and hesitancy of people to associate with them. Looks and snores. Lack of understanding, the abuse, the rejection, the talk and rumors and gossip, the disapproval and the rejection, the ridicule and sometimes the physical persecution and martyrdom. The believers are thought honorable and usually respected. But ministers are too often treated as some kind of different person in a different kind of profession. Kind of person and profession other people would not want nor choose for their life's work. Ministers are too, are too often without honor among the world and tragically among believers. Again, note the sharp contrast between the attitude of too many believers and the true minister. This was the problem with the Corinthians. That is the problem with too many believers and churches. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 23 verse 2, And he said unto them, Oh, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 36, as it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, 4 wrote, We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 22, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Now let I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and verse 11, Paul wrote, We which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. The light also of Jesus might be made manifested in our mortal flesh. True ministers serve no matter the cause. True ministers are the servants of Christ and the stewards of God's gospel and mysteries. Therefore they pay any price to show the gospel and to minister to people. Paul said that he and the apostles we're bringing these very suffering, even unto this present other. 
They sometimes lack food, water, and clothing. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27, Matthew chapter 25, verse 36, and James chapter 2, verse 15. They will be buffeted and beaten with fists that is pushed about and left. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, and Acts chapter 23, verse 2. They had no harm as recorded in Matthew chapter 8, verse 20, and Matthew chapter 10, verse 23. Not a burden to the church, even if it meant they had to labor as tackle jobs in order to reach the world and minister. According to Acts chapter 18, verse 3, and Acts chapter 20, verse 34. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, and 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9, and 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 8. They were reviled or railed at, but they blessed. According to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, and 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. They were persecuted, but they suffered it. According to Luke chapter 6, verse 28, they were defamed or slandered. But they beseech or exhorted and met slanderous behavior with kindness. The men as a folk, the refuge, rubbish, garbage, and the scum of the earth. What are we doing for Christ today? How much are we suffering to preach the gospel and to minister to people? How many preachers are and how many believers? have only given all they are and have to share the gospel with the world. How many have sacrificed and given so much that they can eat only one or two meals a day? How many have only a few clothes hanging in the closet? How many cars are in the garage? How much money is in the bank? How many of us have really sacrificed all we are and have, like the apostles did. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 11, let Blessed are ye, but men shall revile you, and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you for the for my sake. In Matthew chapter 10, and verse 39, He that find his life shall lose it. He that lose his life for my sake, shall find it. In Matthew chapter 19 and verse 29, every one that has forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive it hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. In Acts chapter 9 and verse 16 or 2, I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 11, We which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. The light also of Jesus may be made manifest in our mortal flesh. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10, we are told, Therefore I take pleasure and infirmities, and reproaches, and necessities, and persecutions, and distresses for Christ's sake. When I am weak, then am I strong. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 29, whole root. For you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. In James chapter 5 and verse 10, we are told, Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of self-reflection and of patience. God bless you and God be with you as a prayer of our heart.